Meridian, the Green Guide, by Clouds, My Head in the Clouds Not Coming Down, read by Ock Shadow 5, Chapter 85, Support, Summary, The Aftermath of the Combat Exercise. Toshinori shuffled awkwardly and then Nezu stare for a long moment. Okay, I'll admit that giving the boy a new quirk right before a combat exercise maybe wasn't the best idea. It wasn't even an idea, was it? Nezu rubbed the bridge of his nose. It was an impulse because you thought Kaminari was ready to receive it, so you passed it on the moment he accepted without even thinking of the consequences. I thought Viridian's warnings would have extended a little farther into your psyche, but what's done is done. Dara Rosa's insulating fabric protected the other three students from the worst of the final lightning storm and were monitoring young Kaminari's brain activity, which seems to be recovering more quickly than we expected which is a blessing. Most of the damage done was to the building itself, the cameras, which will need to be replaced, of course, the power outages that affected half the school. All things considered, we were very lucky this did not end much worse. I know, Toshina responded quietly. You're right, I wasn't thinking and I acted on impulse. I will try to do better. I am counting on it, Nezu said sternly. He held his glare for a few moments before relaxing into a smile. All that being said, Kaminari's control of one for all is extremely promising. With the exception of losing control at the end of the exercise, it appears that he used the extra power well, especially considering that how he used it was unexpected. I just thought it would make his muscles stronger, Toshinari shook his head. I suppose it makes sense for it to strengthen his quirk instead, but... Before Toshinari could continue his sentence, the door to Nezu's office slammed open and Aizawa was strode in, looking distressed. He was careful to close the door behind him before freaking out. I'm sure you figured this out already, but Kaminari has obviously either been targeted by the villain factory or is actively working with them. How are we going to deal with this? Toshinari coughed up a bit of blood. What? Kaminari working with the villain factory? Where in the heavens would you get an idea like that? Aizawa looked at him like he was an idiot. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, just maybe... The fact that he showed up to class today with a suspicious new quirk? Come on, All Might. I know you use your fists more than your brain, but think about it for two seconds. Kaminari's quirk is electrification, not magnetism. Or, it was before today. But that also explains why his quirk control was so poor this afternoon when a few weeks ago it was exemplary. All that on its own would be bad enough, but Kaminari obviously has some sort of connection to Viridian, based on the similar fighting style. So if the villain factory is actively targeting Kaminari, they are most likely targeting him as well, or worse, the whole connection could be a trap for the villain factory to get their hands on Viridian, in the worst case scenario that Kaminari is actively working for Offer 1. Toshinari said in relief. He had almost panicked for a moment, thinking that he had been catfished into impulsively giving his quirk to a villain, but if the changes to young Kaminari's quirk were the only reason Ezawa had to suspect him, then they didn't have anything to worry about. He did seem oddly worried about Viridian being targeted, although perhaps that was simply because he was close to the boy. He latched onto the idea, hoping to move the conversation away from one for all on young Kaminari. What reason would offer one even have to target Viridian? Aizawa sighed and collapsed into the other chair in front of Mrs. desk. Where do we even begin? There's the talent here for so sniffing out information that he shouldn't have access to, and then of course the fact that he acts on it. From Endeavor and some of the other berserkers, we know that Offer One is aware of him and sees him as a threat, but I've got a theory, and, as much as I hate it, I think there's more to Offer One's goals than just getting rid of the kid. Hmm? Nezu took a sip of his tea and poured a cup for Aizawa. Do explain. Aizawa glared at him, but gave in after a moment. He looked exhausted. Well, we've never been able to identify Viridian's quirk, which means that it's most likely weak, passive, or mental. Normally, we could expect those quirks to be fairly common, but my most recent theory is that he has a very rare and most likely very powerful passive quirk. At first, I thought it was just danger attraction, because the problem child has an undeniable talent for finding trouble, but after the beach attack, I'm thinking it's more than that. He groaned and took a sip of the offer tea. You have to admit that with as good as the kid is at sniffing out danger, he's just as good at escaping it. For God's sake, the kid became a vigilante with the goal of a villain killing him, and he failed spectacularly. 
Not that I'm upset about that, obviously, but the simple truth is that the kid should be dead by now, and he's not. The beach fight just makes that even more obvious. When I talked to a Viridian after everything happened, he hadn't even known the bees were filled with anything, and he insisted that he hadn't been stung, which sounds impossible considering the shape the rest of us were in. Even getting to cover wouldn't have protected him from every single bee, and Queen Bee would definitely have targeted him if she realized he was trying to hack her hive. So the logical conclusion is that he was lying, or at the very least hiding something extremely important. Aizawa heaved a tired sigh. If Viridian had a quirk that not only attracted danger, but also provided him with a level of invulnerability to its effects, it would do a lot to explain how he survived this long. In the case of the beach attack, either his quirk prevented him from being stung entirely, or simply prevented the poison from taking effect. If the invulnerability aspect of his quirk is a recent development, or if he doesn't fully understand it, it also might explain why he is so insistent that he cannot be a hero. According to a lot of the propaganda, heroes are supposed to prevent danger, not draw it to them like a magnet, and he most likely would have been bullied harshly for a quirk like that. It makes too much sense. And also one would obviously be eager to get his hands on such a useful quirk, Nezu nodded. Well, that is concerning. With such a quirk, other one could make himself practically untouchable. Not that he isn't already, but yes, I can see why he would want to get his hands on Viridian, even if the boy didn't make a habit of meddling in his plans. Are you sure of this, Aizawa? About as sure as I ever am about anything to do with Viridian, Aizawa huffed. So, not at all. But don't think I don't see what you're trying to do. The Radian might be involved with all this, but he's not the problem child we're talking about. What are you trying to hide, All Might? Nothing, Toshinari answered, probably a little too quickly. I simply think you're overreacting. This is probably just a natural mutation. They're fairly common and quirks do develop oddly sometimes. Ezra looked at him incredulously. Yes, when kids are little, after highly intensive training, not randomly in the middle of class, and especially not when we know that there's a supervillain on the loose who has figured out how to give people multiple quirks. Don't be an idiot, All Might. No, no, Aizawa, Nisa said gently. I'm sure everything will work out fine. There's no need to lose your temper. And All Might, Aizawa is actively involved in the villain factory case, which, by extension, means that he is involved in the other one investigation. In addition... He is young Kaminori's homeroom teacher and would most likely be able to help him, so I believe that in this particular case, openness and honesty are likely the best course of action, don't you agree? So you do know something, as I were accused. It's better have that Viridian somehow figured it out, Toshinari muttered. It's dangerous, and I really don't think increasing the number of people involved will... Let me get this straight, as I were growled. There is a secret that is apparently so dangerous that you're actively trying to limit the amount of people who know it, even if those people should know, but at least two literal teenagers are knee-deep in it with, correct me if I'm wrong, practically zero adult supervision? I, uh... Toshin already flattered slightly. I guess I hadn't thought of it quite like that. As was Blair hardened a little more. Start talking. Denki didn't know he could experience social awkwardness in his own head. The only reaction his greeting got was shocked silence and a couple of wide eyes. He felt like he was intruding on something, which was honestly kinda unfair, considering they were all in his head, or at least he was pretty sure they were. It felt kinda like a dream mixed with the usual dazed state he was used to when he shot it out, so he felt justified in making that assumption, but his guests just kept staring at him, their forms blowing slightly at the edges in a way that, in his current state, felt completely natural. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do in this situation. Dinky blurted out. Um, am I supposed to offer you water or, like, muffins or something? Because I guess you're kinda, like, my guests in a way, but, um, I don't know if... Does water exist here? I mean, it probably can, right? I mean, it's my brain, so anything I can think of should exist, but does that make it real or... One of the people... A mom-like woman with her hair half put back chuckled. You're quite the chatterbox, aren't you, Nine? Denki stopped rambling and blushed deeply, or whatever the equivalent to blushing was in this weird dream space. Some of his visitors seemed amused, while others looked mightily confused, and one or two looked downright incredulous and kind of little angry. 
It was terrifying. One of those ones, a guy who looked like a scary biker on steroids, was the next to speak up. What the fuck, kid? How are you talking? Um... Dinky glanced from biker guy back to mom lady. I... I thought this was my head. Does it not make sense for me to be talking? Normally, it takes a few months of having one for all to even be able to access the space and even longer to be able to communicate within it, a guy with ratty white hair said. Most holders just aren't used to accessing this part of their brain yet. Sorry, you can call me one. Cool, Denki nodded. Weird name, but cool. Also, I mean, I guess I spend a lot of time here already. I mean, I guess this is where I go when I overuse my quirks, so... Wait. This happens all the time? Baker guy shouted. Seriously, kid? Well, it's been happening less, Dinky defended. I've been training really hard, so I haven't really needed to go over my limits, except for that one time at the entrance exam. But then I got on my square today, and I wasn't trying to go over, but there was just so much energy, and I lost control, and it was so scary, and... It's all right, my boy. A skinny guy with long bangs gave what was probably supposed to be a comforting smile but it kind of a shot, especially considering that he was a lot more blurry than the others. Adjusting to one for all can be a difficult process, but I was impressed by your performance in the exercise today. Of course you were. Becker guy came and slapped Denki on the back, which was weird considering it was more of an emotional sensation rather than physical like he expected. It felt like... having a dad, maybe? Our little nine is a badass. Um... Denki spoke up nervously. Why do you keep calling me that? You're the ninth holder of one for all. A guy who was dressed kinda like a knockoff best Janice said. I'm the sixth holder, so you can just call me six. Denki nodded and tried really hard to pay close attention as everyone introduced themselves, or each other, when one of the holders didn't want to talk for some reason. Like a guy was five, apparently, mom lady was seven, and skinny dude was eight. It was all very confusing. Wait, wait, back up. Denki waved his hands around. But I thought you said I'm nine. One nodded. You are. But then who's he? Denki gestured frantically to the skinny guy that had introduced himself as eight. Because I got the quirk from All Might, not whoever that is. To his surprise, that made Seven snort. That is All Might, kiddo. You see what happens when you flex too much, Pipsqueak? Faith pulled eight to a headlock and messed up his hair. Your own successor doesn't even recognize you. I, uh, I apologize? Eight, all might, said sheepishly, trying to fix his hair with limited success. I try not to show any weakness to the world, and this form isn't really that bad, all things considered. Faith spoke up softly. But whatever, that's not why we're here. Dinky raised his hand. Um, why are you here? Like, I get that you're part of one for all, and you're the past holders and all that, but why? One sighed. It's just part of how quirk transfer works. When someone's quirk is pulled out of them, they leave an imprint on it that doesn't go away. Just like your quirk is part of you, you are a part of your quirk. Denki nodded, trying to keep up. So you're all, what, ghosts? Eight coughed. No, um, I am fairly certain I'm still alive. Not if Nazu has anything to say about it, Seven scolded. Seriously, Toshi? Right before the combat exercise? We're more like shadows, one interrupted. Vestiges that encapsulate who we were, and still are, I suppose, just in a different way. We're the leftovers, kid, Fev shrugged. And you're stuck with us, so as long as you're all special and able to talk, we might as well get to know you. Yeah, kiddo, Seven smiled kindly. Tell us about you. Oh my gosh. We got a conversation with the past holders and Denki. I'm so happy I get to voice Nana. Just like a little bit. But also the part with Aizawa, like learning about one for all, I guess. Because he said start talking and Nezu implied. Yeah, you, you get what I mean. But anyways, guys, I hope you all enjoyed chapter 85 of Red in the Green Guide, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!